pro wrestling, arguably one of the pillars of American entertainment. At least it used to be, as the medium has been on a steady decline for the past decade, with most of the heavy hitting and well-known faces going on to pursue other things or straight up retiring altogether. Now, robotic fights, battle bots, Gundams, mechs, whatever you call them, they're pretty cool. You have these big hunks of metal throwing punches like it's real steel, or in BattleBot's case, the Death Room was flying at Mach 10. Both the which are pretty fun to watch, but with Real Steel being essentially a dead franchise, and BattleBots being on a bit of a decline, I look for something more. Something that combined it two, but instead of making an horrific chimera of them, made something more beautiful than the elements that created it on their own. This leads into the topic of the video, Robot Pro Wrestling Dekinoka. Robot Pro Wrestling Dekinoka was introduced to me about a year ago, when Penguin Z Zero, Moist Critical, or just Charlie, whatever you want to call him, made a few videos just talking about it. I just watched them the day they came out, but only recently became reinterested when rewatching the videos. I began to watch a bunch of videos and do a bit of research. Finding info beyond what was on the very surface was incredibly difficult, most certainly because I didn't speak Japanese and none of the videos were translated. So let's get on to the quick history lesson. The Robot Pro Wrestling Dekinoka was launched November 3rd, 2008 in Soka City, Saitama Prefecture. A fact that was found on the official website, Ryuketsu Comments, robot section. It was basically only found on that website. Again, info for this is incredibly hard to find. It's basically a subsidiary of Robot 1 in that it sort of has the same concept and sometimes share the same robots. What's Robot 1? It's basically the same thing as Dekinoka, only a bit more professional and less of the goofy shit that Dekinoka is personally my choice for the sort of entertainment it is. So yeah, Robot One is pretty more professional, while Dekinoka has that goofy undertone that is likely meant for children, evident by the many children that do show up to these events. Alright, history lesson over. Now time for the funny. Dekinoka is a live-streamed affair that can be seen in person, wherever they decide to host it. This varies a lot. It can be hosted in Akihabara, or it can be hosted in some other locations, usually locations for, like, otaku culture. The live streams are usually cut down into fights, which can be watched on a YouTube channel. Everything about a bot's personality can be clued into without knowing the language. Each part of them tells a story, from the costumes to their fighting styles, each of which varies greatly. They even get their own themes, like an actual wrestling match, some of which are legitimate bangers. Sometimes they go ahead and do some Robo One style matches, the rules of which I don't even know. Again, I don't speak Japanese, but from what I can tell, it's basically just a contest to knock down your opponent in a certain amount of time. Knocking yourself over doesn't seem to count, and points vary from the coolness of the move. I don't know, leg sweeps and like sumo plexes and shit just get more points. Then there are the funny matches I was talking about, where there are basically no rules and most of the action is either scripted or played out in some form. Sometimes there isn't even really action, more or less just a performance like the Taka Takamaru in Afro. I mean, he blows bubbles and then dies, and like, the, the kabuki dancer Taka Takamaru just laughs at him. It's, it's a good time. The official matches are the most engaging because they usually follow Saga, the hero or villain of the Dekinoka Cinematic Universe, an actual powerhouse that has a massive rise to power as the final boss that is yet to be stopped by the other bots. Only really being challenged by the likes of Waru, a battle that has been going on for over a decade and likely won't be ending anytime soon. But even Dekinoka isn't exactly popular, at least not in the West, compared to the other forms of fighting entertainment, so why do I find it most enjoyable? In short, I'm just a weirdo who likes weird Japanese shit, and slightly longer, it goes back to pro wrestling, where you come for the characters that were duking geek out. You didn't come to see Mark Calloway, you came to see The Undertaker. The charm of seeing these robots duke it out with their own stories and characters that are known at first glance feels lost with newer wrestling. And of course, it definitely just has more of that goofy charm that older wrestling was really all about, you know, the goofier characters that a lot of people like but you weren't really fleshed out, get fleshed out in robot wrestling. And of course Afro, I mean, he's literally the best character and arguably is the main character, fuck Saga, Saga ain't worth 